So, Father Christopher Whitehead, down at St. John the Evangelist in Bath, you've obviously been able to open your church for private individual prayer as of Monday the 15th of June. Just tell us a little bit about the challenges you faced in, in making that happen safely. I think one of the initial challenges was listening to news that was coming out of saying the churches could open and possibly that they were opening in July and then a little hint that maybe they could open earlier. The church had had, had been cleaned and we had used uh, the opportunity of lockdown and the church being closed as an opportunity just to get one or two things done and a bit of cleaning and a bit of tidying up done anyway. So to a certain degree, the church was ready. And then, of course, once we were given that green light, and as far as compliant with with what our diocese asked by way of risk assessments and all that kind of thing, we were ready to go. Supplies had arrived, and again, that was all coordinated centrally. And so a delivery arrived with everything that we needed to clean things down, tape things off, get things ready. And so the 15th came, the place had been cleaned, it had been taped off, it was marshalled, I had the volunteers ready, and we just had to open the doors. Let's go at it from this perspective. Let's say I come to the door, or in this case, it's probably quite important to say the entrance. How how am I greeted by the marshal? How do you get me to a seat so I can, you know, be in the presence of God and so forth? How does it work practically? I'm at your entrance now. There are two doors. There's one way to come in and one way to go out. We have a side entrance that is used day by day. And then there are the west doors, which are open, you know, sort of um, on big days and in the summer and for weddings and things like that. So it seemed appropriate to get people into the place through the usual way that they were used to entering. And as you come through the door, you might meet me uh, standing on the the outside, greeting people as, as they arrive at the church. But as you enter the church, one of the marshals is there to, to welcome you, to say hello to smile at you and very gently and non-threateningly just to ask you to make use of the hand gel that's there. And then they'll direct you. There's a one-way flow through the church down the the north side, uh, across the front, and then to exit the church, you come up the the centre aisle. And there are arrows very subtly on the floor. There are parts of the, the church that are taped off, so not every bench is used. But I think our marshals very much leave it up to the individual where they want to sit. But as you choose which bench you want to sit in, you'll see that there are identifications of where you cannot sit to allow spacing between those in the same bench. Now, we've had families come in, and families are are allowed, of course, to, to sit together. But we've tried to follow the guidelines, both in spirit and in, and in letter, Because I think the one thing that we are so keen to do is to make sure that we are compliant to what is required both of government and of Bishop's Conference, but most importantly, to observe what principles are are, are given to us to ensure people can make use of our church, to come into our church, to pray in our church, to be quiet and sit in our church, but feel safe and to feel as if they're they're being looked after. And that's what we've tried to do at every level, whether it's taping, whether it's marking seats, whether it's what's available for them to, to wipe their hands with as they come in or as they go, the welcome that they receive. They're not sort of unclear about where they're to go, which way they're to go, where they're to sit. Everything is as clear as it can possibly be whilst allowing our church to still be a place of quiet and a place of prayer. So in terms of that sort of sanitisation, without being provocative, do you think for people it feels a bit different? feels like you're sort of over-sanitising an experience that is obviously sacred and holy. How do you sort of get around that? I think the the, the people that are coming in to church, do you know, they don't bat an eyelid. There's nobody who's balked at the fact that they've been asked very discreetly, very gently, very subtly, would they mind using the the antibacterial gel there's there's nobody that has that has flinched at that and i imagine by the time now we've come to church 
if people have ventured up into the shops or or anywhere that's that's open it's now a common feature i've seen people come in wearing gloves i've seen people coming in wearing face masks nobody thinks twice now or looks twice because that's part of our normal at the moment it's part of our our climate you know i thought people would come in maybe i was getting a bit hyper because i was just it was that fear factor and i didn't want the church just to be used as a, a kind of just a free for all but you know as people have come in there has been a tremendous stillness and people have sat there and it, there's, there's been quite an emotional reconnection with the building now don't forget what we've also had as a parish in in this period of, of lockdown is an opportunity to keep people connected with someone familiar and a place that's familiar and so i've had to learn all kinds of new skills in the last three months about live streaming and i i'm not necessarily so comfortable always in front of a, of a camera but it's not just about mass that's been live streamed and it's not just about the rosary that has been live streamed every day I've used the opportunity for a little catechesis, as so many people have, but not just a, a catechesis by way of trip-trapping through the, the catechism, but actually using the art and the architecture in our church building to keep people connected to a building that they would so readily call home. And we've also had, and again, we've been ever conscious of making sure that we're socially distant, but somebody has come into the church with um, a drone and we've been able to just take people around the church and keep them connected to a building that they are, or at least they thought they were so familiar with, until either the little catechesis and the little walk around the church or the drone video has exposed them to things in the church, windows in the church, carvings in the church, that they've never seen or they've never noticed or they've never given a second glance to. So that, in a sense, has, has given them a, a kind of a, a joy about coming back because they've only seen things either on our Facebook page by virtue of photographs or they've seen things on their devices by virtue of video and, and, and little camera. Now they've come to re-explore the church that is so familiar to them. And are you seeing people coming in now every day since reopening? I, I did wonder whether there'd be a queue at the door. You know, there was an eagerness to come back into the church, and I thought, gosh, is it going to be like the sale at, um, at Debenhams or something like that, and they're going to be queuing up um, from, from, from 8 o'clock, waiting for me to celebrate Mass at 10, get out the way, and open the doors at 11. We have found over two hours there has just been a beautiful, gentle trickle of people who've not made a fuss, they've not made a, a song and a dance about coming back. It's not a kind of a, a victory rally that the doors have been opened. There has just been an emotional pleasure, I think, and a joy, almost a, a tear in, in some people's eyes, about being able to come and be in the presence of Christ in the Blessed Sacrament, just for five minutes, just for ten minutes, just for half an hour, just for an hour. It doesn't matter. It's the fact that it's an open door. And I think that gives a wonderful message at this time of, you know, when we are emerging out of locked doors, almost in that, that sort of resurrection, that Pentecost experience. And I think that's not a motif we need to lose because, of course, we went into lockdown during the season of Lent. And for a lot of people, they've yet to celebrate Easter in that kind of, ecclesial, community, churchy way. They might have done if they'd been watching it on live stream or, or tuning in to a church here, there or everywhere. But for some people, they haven't had a connection with church since the, the middle of Lent. Mm, it's that sacramental longing, isn't it? Absolutely. And coming out from behind locked doors into the joy of the presence of Christ is a wonderful thing. Now, I wanted to finish, Father Christopher, by just asking you a, a few, in a sense, retrospective things, looking back on lockdown, which we're not fully out of yet. 
you know, I've spoken to many priests and one of the great sadnesses, I would say, is talking about those difficult occasions such as funerals, you know, conducting a, a detached, minimalist, sort of contact-free funeral, which is almost this sort of antithesis of, of, of how we do funerals in the Catholic Church, where a, a consoling hand or a, a gentle embrace is, is the most natural thing. Have you had to conduct any or have you heard from brother priests that have? I have. I've had about, you know, half a dozen. I think we, we've been fortunate in this part of the country to have had a, a low number of cases. But sadly, people are still dying, whether it be of COVID-19 or or any other ailment or, or disease or, or simply because life has run out and somebody's got old. And some of the funerals, the early funerals that I celebrated, either at the cemetery or straight to the crematorium, there was a sadness because some of those people would have naturally come to church. Some of those people were so well known and had large families and a large circle of friends. But of course, what the coronavirus has stripped them of is that ability to come together in death and in the hope of resurrection. The first couple of weeks of celebrating a funeral or two, the restrictions were that at the crematorium chapel, it was just 10 family members and me. And the chairs were all spaced out in the, the chapel. And that was quite a, a sobering thought, that even the crematorium chapel, which could normally pack about 50, 60, 70 people in, had been stripped out with only 10 chairs, and no more than 10 could come in. And as you say, it was the, the sadness of trying to get everything that you would want for a dignified prayer for funeral into an even trimmed down amount of time. So instead of the normal 30 minutes, it was now 20 minutes. It was sad though to see people coming masked up and gloved up, not able to reach out and shake hands. You know, that's my kind of natural reaction is in welcome and in, or when people are leaving is just to give that reassuring handshake. No, that was that was taken taken from us. And even the funeral that I celebrated last week, again, okay, the numbers were up to 18 members were allowed, but still the distance, an extra 10 minutes of time was allowed. But there's something I think that, that we've been bereft of there is, is the opportunity to, to stand alongside a family, to walk with them in the way that as Catholics we, we're so used to. Everything has been kind of touched by this virus. It's not just health. I think it's also our well-being and the, the, the ritual, the way we do things, what seems most natural to us. Even that's been touched by virus and, and disease. It's interesting when you talk about that sort of the removal of that and the well-being side of that, because I did want to just finally ask you how you'd coped personally with lockdown. I know we put a particular document on our website about priests staying psychologically healthy because, you know, you don't have your communities or your, your contact with them is different and limited. And I know you're a sociable person anyway. So how have you coped during lockdown? I suppose I've, I've coped with a certain busyness. And that's not by way of, of trying to dull the what's lacking or, or, or ignore what's missing. Uh, but of course, there's much to be getting on with. And so I, I think with live streaming, that does take an, an energy out, out of you, an emotional energy, because even though I, I like to think I celebrate Mass with a, a bit of preparation in a prayerful way that I approach the sacraments with a goodly amount of necessary preparation, I found, gosh, I've had to think about every word. I have to think about every gesture, every movement, where I put things so that it doesn't look odd, how the sanctuary is laid out so it doesn't look stupid, or I'm not overreaching, or I'm not disappearing from view just to go and find something. I've got everything that I need here. But of course, the difficulty in even not finding that there's a response. When I say the Lord be with you, nothing comes back. But just I'm ever conscious of the people the other side of the camera who are saying, and with your spirit. It's become kind of a new routine for them. I've kept in touch with, with parishioners. 
I've kept in touch with the parishioners that need just a phone call. And it might just be a, a hello. It might just be a how are you. It might just be, is there anything that you need? But actually, there's there's one lovely lady in the parish who has been instrumental in making sure that our city is connected in outreach. And she's been managing, for want of a better word, or making sure it happens that those who need help in isolation, that they get it. And so whether that's medicines being picked up from the, the pharmacy or or food delivered or or whatever it is, we've got a lovely lady from St. John's who's part of that community outreach. And she's drawn in people from all over Bath, not just parishioners, although there are many parishioners who've responded to that call to, to help. That's encouraging because that's how we keep faith and the gospel alive. I suppose what I have missed personally is that ability just to be close to people. You know, I don't mean in a touchy-feely way, that's not who I am. Now, I've had a couple of retired priests because as a community here at St. John's, we're, we're fortunate that we have five retired priests. And I've had two of them at Mass every day. They've been distant from one another and they've been away from the camera because, of course, they're of a particular age and I suppose they would be classed under one of the, 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 the categories of people that are, are supposed to take lockdown and isolation and shielding seriously. We've maintained that. But even with that community of three of us, it still doesn't make up for the fact that you know there are people who come to Mass to encounter the Lord. Because I think, as I'm speaking to you, that's where I find I encounter the Lord in the community that listens to the word of God with me and the community that celebrates the giving and the love of Christ in the Eucharist. Very well said. So I suppose we all look forward to the, the safe time when we can go back to church for mass as well as for private prayer. Absolutely. I, and I think that's something that people are holding their breath for. you know. And I don't think there'll be a flood back because I still think there is a sort of an element of People are unsure. People have been sort of living under a cloud of fear. But I think there is that, that joy that is, that is just beginning to you know, burst into a springtime at the moment when people do realise that actually we will be able to come back together and together as a community of faith, we will be able to, to celebrate and to remind ourselves that nothing separates us from the love of God. And just finally, if people want to see a face behind who I'm talking to today and maybe see you with your newfound skills celebrating Mass, um, where can they go online for that? If you just Google St John's RC Church Bath, people will be able to find us. There's a great community that's been built up by virtue of social media. And again, that's using the skills of people in the parish. This is where this time has been great because the skilled up folk in St. John's have really now put their gifts and their talents at the service of the community, whether that's through helping me navigate my way through live streaming or through communications or through our website, all those things. It's been a welcome. And I think, and it's not braggy and boasty, and I'm not bothered about numbers. I think what has been encouraging for me is to see people from all across the world at this moment, at this time in our lives, connected in so many ways, in so many places, but there are families connected by virtue of live stream. There are friends connected by virtue of live stream from so many different countries, and that's been encouraging. Well, I'm glad we've been connected for the last 20 minutes or so. Fascinating to hear how you're coping with the reopening and, in fact, with the great challenge that is recovery from COVID-19 for all our communities. Father Christopher Whitehead, St John the Evangelist Parish Priest in Bath, thank you very much indeed. Thank you for your time.